Hello, and welcome to a very addictive episode of the Drywall Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Harmon. With us on the show today, we have Jeff Schultz out of Powell River, British Columbia. Jeff runs SSB a drywall and has a very particular opinion about the automatic tools and isn't afraid to share that opinion. Uh, man, I'm constantly buying new things to try, and there's a couple of really disappointing tools i've purchased in the last few years and this Ooh, real- should we talk should we talk about the disappointing tools uh sure <laughs> i'm not i don't care i was really disappointed it wasn't it, it wasn't an inexpensive tool so i'm a little disappointed in it for sure. all right all right let's talk about we don't have to talk brands what what type of tool was it Jeff is awesome, as are all of the awesome drywall dudes and dudettes we have on the Drywall Podcast. Jeff and I discuss his challenges early in life with drug addiction and running his own company. We also talk about that time he came to a training up at Columbia Tools uh, for Fresco Harmony. He's done a little bit of fresco in his area and is getting better all the time. The Drywall Podcast in the month of July is brought to you by our friends over the pond at GWI, supplying the UK with drywall finishing products since 2021. They deliver quality brands nationwide. You can check them out on Facebook, Instagram, or go online at www.gwiltd.com for all your finishing needs. We just shipped out our last box of Fresco Harmony over to GWI. They will have a fabulous selection of Fresco Harmony products and... We will be doing a training in September at GWI. Stay tuned for details on that. Guests of the Drywall Podcast will receive a sweet swag bucket from our friends at CSR in Toronto. Swag buckets include, but are not limited to, stickers, shirts, a three-way tech dry tool, Fresco Harmony color pack, and lots of other cool stuff. But for now, Jeff Schultz out of Powell River, British Columbia, on the 59th Drywall Podcast. Let's get into it. Yeah, man. Well. Yeah. It's nice. It's nice. Looks good. Looks like chaos, because that's what my house is all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, S-S-B-E-A Drywall? That's me. How do you, how do you, how do you say that? Just SSB. SSB. Yep. And um, what does SSB stand for? Um, well, uh, my old nickname is Shitty. Shitty. And my wife's old nick Shitty, and my wife's old nickname is Sweet Cheeks, and our child's name was B. And uh, so I was registering my company. <laughs> When we were expecting a child, then I just blurted out because I thought they would just hand me a number and say, uh, hey, man, here's your number. Because yeah. I had no idea. And uh, they said, well, you need a name. Yeah. So I said SSB, but there was an SSB roofing. So I had to add the EA. And oh. that's that's me. So I'm no longer DJ shitty wallet. I'm now just SSB drywall. Shitty sweet cheeks B. I like it. Yeah. So it's uh it's been a thing since two thousand two thousand August two thousand and seven. That's interesting, but like who cares? You're in a remote <laughs> air you're <laughs> you're in a remote area of uh Vancouver, BC, correct? Well, of um, BC uh mainland, but I'm Five hours north of Vancouver. Okay. Two ferry, two ferry sailings between here and there. So, on any given day, how long would you say it get it takes you to get from? And what's the name of your city? I live in Powell River. P O W E L L. That's correct. It's got to be just gorgeous up there. I mean, going up to Salt Spring was a real treat. 
Yeah, it's uh, it it doesn't suck to live here. It's pretty no, nice. No, no, you're in you're in God's country up there. Um, <clears throat> and then you, how far are you from Salt Spring? Uh, I have to take a ferry over to the island, and then drive a little ways south, and then another ferry from there to Salt Spring. So, um, we're. I, I don't know. I haven't been to Salt Spring. So I don't really know exactly how long the drive is, but I would okay. say probably about three or four hours of my day. Fair to say it takes a while for you to get anywhere. If you're going somewhere, you just hang out yep. in Powell River, do your deal. What would you say the population of Powell River is? Last time I checked, I believe it was around 25,000 people for the greater Powell River area. Okay, it's pretty big then. Uh, yeah, smaller than what I'm used to because I came from Calgary, which is a million Huge. plus. Yeah, yeah, very big. So okay, smaller than what I've been accustomed to, but it's it's good. How long have you been in Powell River? Two years. Two years, so pretty fresh up there. And you started your drywall company. We'll get into the drywall <laughs> stuff. We have Jeff Schultz with us today on the Drywall Podcast. Um, and I want to give thank you so much for going through the pains of, uh, you know, figuring out the, the you know, all of the, it's, it's not too big a deal to jump on here. I mean, it does, you have to cross over a little bit of like uncomfortability to learn something new, which is tough for us drywallers. But once you get on, it's pretty fun. And we're, we're talking and we're going to have a great conversation. Um, a little background, Jeff, I met Jeff. I recently did a training at Columbia Tools headquarter in uh, up in uh, BC, Vancouver, BC, just outside of Vancouver, BC. And um, we had a we had a gaggle of people that were going to come to the training and a bunch of people bagged out there at the last minute. And Jeff like showed up. And uh, he dug right in and we had a great time. We made samples. You were watching me do an accent wall. You were asking a ton of questions. And then I gave you some, you got a bunch of great swag that day. You went back to Powell River and you've been inquiring with me a little bit off and on. And you've been like doing walls, posting on social media, and you've been kind of selling this thing a little bit. Um, and you're doing drywall, of course, at the same time. I appreciate you being on the show. You worked late today. We're It's late here for me at 7 o'clock in the evening. It's 6 o'clock for you. So I appreciate you, um, you know, burning the midnight oil, so to speak. Um, yeah, early, early to mid-evening, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. It's not bad. It's actually not. not it's it's kind of good to do. I normally do these in the morning, but this is cool. Um yeah. So where are we going to start? You were, uh, I just found you to be a great guy. It was really cool to work with you and watch you sort of explore the colored mud. You were very interested. You took a long pilgrimage to get down, learn about the co colored mud. And, you know, uh, we'll talk a little bit about your early experiences with Fresco Harmony. But um, before... Let's dive right in. How did you come to this crazy drywall uh, a career? Were you a first generation, second generation? How did that all start? How did you stumble onto drywall? Uh, first generation in um, August of 1995, my mom... I was living in my mom's basement. I was back from Vancouver and I was living in Calgary and I was up to nothing doing sweet FA and she basically kicked me out. Yeah. So I went to go live at a buddy's house cause he had a spare room and he did drywall out of a 300 ZX. Um, he, what, what's a 300 ZX? An old Nissan sports car. Okay. It's like <laughs> there was room for one box of mud, a box of tools, and us two yeah. dummies. Yeah. And then he dropped me off at a job and said, skim this wall. And he gave me a, a knife with no handle. Nice. And by the time he got back, this part of my hand was so cut. But 
um, smoking weed was important back then. So yeah. it just seemed like, okay, well, I can do this and smoke weed. Well, yes. Okay, cool. I guess. Can I get some gloves or like a handle? <laughs> and uh, so I had a job. He gave me a place to stay and we drove around in this stupid little sports car with the basic, basic stuff for a, yeah. about a month. Until we got what'd you banned. use just out of curiosity? What'd you use for, uh, to like, did you have a four foot ladder that you crammed in that thing? How did you, what did you use to get, did you have a little bench? Uh, there was a milk crate that the tools came in. Cause that's all we <laughs> needed for this, uh, eight foot ceiling skimming walls in this old, uh, as you guys call them remodel, but renovation. Okay. Uh, and um yeah it was just a here you go check this out and Funny. it sucked yeah it totally sucked but yeah i'm uh i'm stubborn and i stuck it out because why, again why do you think that important. why do you think yeah partying is important well you could make money but why do you think why do you think you stuck it out in drywall just out of curiosity um i like the fact that it was um it's always the same, but it's always different and it's always a challenge. Yeah. And I like to figure out problems on the fly versus study something to know it all. I like to, to know all about it. I just like to see it and figure it out in the moment. Okay. And, uh, and I'm a, uh, I'm a practical learner versus a, um, like a studying learner. I like to sh show me, I try it. I learned something and then I got good at it. And the fact that I have um, freakishly long arms is really helpful. Yeah. Uh, so Wait, I you say freak, freakishly, have you been told that you have long arms? How do you know you have long arms? Uh, but the wingspan test, like fingertip to fingertip. Yeah. It's supposed to be the average human height or it's supposed to be your height within like a half inch or something. I should be about four inches taller if that were true. So oh. I have really good reach for a guy my height. Oh, and, interesting. Um, yeah, it's really neat if you get people to do this thing where you flat span on a wall, one finger on the floor and one up top. Okay. Most people are really close to what that fingertip wingspan is. And uh, my I should be like four inches taller. Okay. I've always thought that I had a, a longer wingspan as well, but I've never done the test. I should try, I should do that. And maybe that's, um, that has something to do with an affinity for drywall. I don't know, because it is kind of nice yeah. to reach, you know, you're on the scaffold, you can reach out and get that little corner or, you know, you're on like, you're on your like stilts, but you just like give a little extra like half inch lift on your heel to get like a super high up corner. It seems like an advantage. It's definitely an advantage. It's helped me out greatly over the years. Yeah. As opposed to being short and stubby. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause, and, but I mean, you know, then the short and stubby guys, like they, they are able to get down lower, you know? <laughs> well. They can I run guess. the box. They can run that low two foot band a little better. <laughs> yeah, fair. And they're welcome to it. Yeah, they can have that. Um, very cool. So, what was your friend's name at the time with the with the sportster? Oh, um, my, my buddy Chris. Chris, and uh, he's still in drywall in when in Calgary, I believe. Funny. Uh, so he went from being my employer slash roommate longtime friend like we we knew each other when we were 10 living in winnipeg oh and wow then, uh, okay so so then after some years of working in calgary and doing some other things in vancouver and going back to calgary i started my business and then eventually i hired him to do some work for me of course so, so that that was kind of neat where i i kind of grew up and moved on from partying and being foolish to uh, yeah Hiring, hiring him who who hadn't really completed that cycle that grown up thing <laughs> yeah the cycle <laughs> he's still pretty good at drywall he's just not really good at showing up sure sure that's pretty common too and it's also common that the student becomes the teacher in this trade quite a bit you know the 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 student becomes like flies off gets their own business and it's like hey man 
I need some help over here. Can you, you know, are you busy? Can you come over and give me a hand? Like that sort of story. It's pretty common. Yeah. If we, if we hadn't um, made a, made a human and, and brought a kid into this world, I don't think I would have taken the same path. So uh, uh, that, that really forced my hand to, uh, to grow up and, and yes. get it together. You and, and sweet, and it, you and sweet cheeks, I, I assume. Yeah. 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 <laughs> What's her name? <laughs> My wife's name is Dawn. Dawn, Dawn. Shout out to yeah. Dawn for bringing bringing a child into this world. And it, it is it's Bia, B, B, B E A. Is that what how it's was spelled? Bia. It's it's now Ray. Um, okay. So uh, kids decided to change pronouns and change the name to Ray, and okay. uh, I'm a what supportive else? Sure. parent, and uh, just yeah. don't be a shitty and uh do your thing yeah yeah you want to be you can be called whatever you want just don't be mean to people yeah 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 and kids <laughs> do a fun job of it so good ultimately we haven't ruined our child we're just uh just rolling with it and moving yeah. on yeah just the one for now that's it one and one one and one time only yeah as a boy or a girl girl uh boy Boy. Um, he, him, he, him pronouns now born. Okay. Female. All right. All right. So it's a pro- pronoun thing. Okay. And then, um, how old? 15. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. They are old and trouble. 15. Get... Oh, yeah. Almost 16 here. So. But not, but not too much trouble. Have they like, Hey dad, don't bother me. Have they gone through that yet? Like, I don't want to be bothered. I'm doing my own thing over here. Are they super cool? My kid is awesome. Or our okay. kid. Our our kid is great. They have yeah. a job. Um what are they polite, doing? Uh works in a bakery at a grocery store in town. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Super polite, gets along with teachers, pulled off some yeah. wicked grades this year. Beautiful. Hasn't been arrested, hasn't burned anything down, never stole my car. Okay. Uh doesn't doesn't drink, doesn't do drugs. Like my kid is amazing compared to me at that age oh, yeah man, a, yeah i feel like it's sh- it shifted a little bit from kids nowadays i feel like are better than we were like we it was like all i could do to get the hell out of the house and just run amok you know and and maybe <laughs> part of that part of that is because we didn't have like cameras all over the place you know we left in the morning and came home in the evening and it was like we just just the life of riley i like to think it was chaos, man. It was like yeah. total free reign on the neighborhood and yeah. just come back when the lights are on yeah. or, the, or yeah. somewhere nearby or, you know, whatever, just yeah. don't not come home. Yeah. We're probably pretty close in age. You and I, I would, I, I would, I would imagine. Yeah, I think so. I think we talked about that at, uh, at Columbia. Yeah. Um, very cool. So Chris came to work with you a little bit. You're in Calgary. Yeah. At that point, yeah, he worked with me. I, I subbed out some jobs to him, and okay, and um, and and that's where it was weird from me being his guy to him being one of my guys. Yeah, and then, where does Jeff then, go? Uh, where does Jeff go from here, man? The world is your oyster. Now, and also uh, when you st- let's talk about too when you like separated from Chris, did you start your own business at that point, or just like um, lo- loosely like get side work and stuff? Uh, no, actually I ended up back in Vancouver up to no good partying like a fool. Okay. Um, pursuing other interests, uh, partying and, and just up to no good. And like then, what, uh, what interests, what other interests were you, you're pursuing? You had a little bit of a drywall background, but you're like looking into maybe some other things. What were they? Oh, I was a, I was a full-time drug addict. And, okay. Uh, I was up to absolutely nothing productive. Okay. All right. Um, so when you say you were into some other things, they weren't like, they weren't like, you weren't like studying to be a technician or something. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I, uh, I helped a friend. I helped a friend. You weren't, of mine. A, you weren't in nursing school. <laughs> no, no, no. I was, I actually uh, helped build some rooms, practice rooms at a piano store. That, okay. that was run by a friend of mine's family owned and run operated whatever okay um so I, after i built these rooms i 
asked if I could work there because it was nice and different from drywall, completely yeah. different. Yeah, right? yeah. So they gave me a job, and then I ended up living under the shelves in the warehouse because I was essentially homeless. Okay. And uh, so I, I worked there for what felt like forever, but it was really probably only a year. Sure. Because when you when you're up all the time, it's like not you know, twenty eight hours a day, nine days a week. It really feels like a lot longer than it actually is. So when you say you're up all the time, that was due to like the drug use. You were like into some yeah, heavy drugs. Yeah. You're into some heavy drugs. You needed money. They were cool enough to give you a place to stay. You're sort of camped yeah. out at their shop. Um, were you a derelict at that time? Were you like skimming from the till, or were you like? none of that you just you did your drugs tried not to cause too yeah. much trouble i i worked to support my habit and okay. um, all right they let you they let me stay there and as a result i would i would work the uh, midnight shift and detail all the pianos so that they were sure. ready for delivery the next day okay so i don't know if you know anything about um methamphetamine but a little bit it, it'll help you detail the shit out of something Sure. Like those were so clean and like I went over them and as a result, I never missed the delivery. Like all the pianos were ready to go in the morning. Beautiful. They probably loved you, man. Well, it was a love hate. Like they were super, yeah. they were like the nicest people ever. Okay. And their son's friend was just this degenerate drug addict, Yeah. but he kept the ball rolling because uh, that's just, that was my job. But you can't keep that up like for too too long. I mean, how long did you how long did you milk that cow? Uh, well, <laughs> my life my life started to fall apart like really sure. bad. Yeah, that's uh, the next step. If, if you're listening out there and you're considering the drug lifestyle, it's it's kind of a short window. It's a small window. <laughs> There's only not, so, you can only do that for so long before the body starts to deteriorate, damage starts happening, chaos ensues. Yeah, it's not a career choice or nah. path that's got any <laughs> lasting. There's no there's no future in it really. No, uh, a lot of my friends were. <laughs> A lot of my friends and or acquaintances were either going to or in jail. Uh, a couple of people died. Yep. Um, there was lots of, it was always just on the edge of absolute chaos in the sense yeah. that the police were around a bunch and for, sure. for silly, silly things that I never went to jail. Right. I never got arrested. It was all just like, I don't know how I didn't end up. And you're dying. a forthright, you're a forthright person. Like you didn't want to bring that heat down on your buddies, you know, people that are, they're taking care of you. They got a shop, they're trying to run. So you were always trying to probably, you know, it's probably difficult to maintain that balance. Oh yeah. It was hard. Like I felt genuinely bad, but yeah. Um, when you're in that life, it's just kind of like, you know, your survival mode, so to speak. And yeah. uh, certain certain rules kind of go by the wayside just to keep happening, but it all, it all worked itself out. Okay. Uh, I remember waking up on the floor one day in the back warehouse and this big Brown rat went running by and I'm like, Oh my God, this is it. This is, I found the bottom. Like, Holy shit. This is the bottom. Okay. All right. And that was, uh, that was 20 years ago. How old were you at that time? 32. Okay. Yeah, that was 30 years ago. I'm I'm uh, 53 this year. Oh, you got me by a few years. 30 years. Okay. Yeah. So I was 20 years. It's 20 years I've been out of that scene. Okay. And it's been a really busy 20 years. Yeah. Now, okay, so the rat runs by. You have sort of an awakening. You're like, I'm going <laughs> to... What happens then? <laughs> well, um... <laughs> My mom, who was living in the states at the time, hadn't I hadn't seen her or talked to her in, in a couple of years because I just kind of kept it all away from her. She yeah. knew I wasn't doing well because she had a spy in the camp. But of course, uh, you know, what a sidebar to the whole main event. Moms um, know. So, moms know. <laughs> moms know. <laughs> so I did, I just reached out to her and um, and she offered to send me a plane ticket to send me to Winnipeg. And then send me a return ticket to send me to Vancouver. So 
it was a via email actually. And then I, I read it and I just uh, responded with, just send me a one way. I'm out of here. I, I'm done. Yeah. And so she did. And that, uh, that started my, it was basically the recovery of, or, you know, get my shit together. Of Jeff Schultz. So, yeah, yeah, just sort of bring it, you know, get it together. Entering, and... entering the recovery years. So you went back to Winnipeg from Vancouver. Yeah. And you did you go to treatment? No, I I'd done a couple of stints in a detox facility in Calgary. Okay. okay. So I was familiar with the program, and it didn't okay. really work for me because of certain elements that they they sure they pushed like higher power it was very church oriented and, and okay. I'm not, that's, that's not my jam yeah so i just i, I just did it because i had to okay you just got clean yeah white white knuckle as they say there was some touch and go moments there yeah there was a yeah. couple of relapses at, at, okay. in the very early stages so one of my living arrangements i was living with some friends who had gone back to winnipeg to smarten up but they they weren't very successful. Sure. So I was staying with them for a short time. We moved into a place and uh, their partying was going on. So then I reached out to my sister and she graciously gave me a place in her basement. Cool. And uh, I just came clean. I'm like, man, I, I just yeah. can't stay with those people. Like yeah. they're, they're friends of mine. I love them to pieces. I was like the best man at their weddings sometime later. And your like family, so your family was rallying to help you out. That's cool. Um, yeah, somewhat reluctantly, but but ultimately, yeah. Okay. And so Re- reluctant to let me into their house, I guess. Yeah, they, yeah. They were all for it, but you know, like let's face it, I was a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, I you know, yeah, a lot of a lot of people in this world are a lot of thievery or they'll steal from their own family, stuff like that. Or they're just, they're just not safe to have around the house or whatever. You know, if, if you're in that lifestyle or world, it's not, it's not conducive to normalcy. Um, so. (laughs) uh, (laughs) So, Greatly understated. But you, you had, you, you've, you've always had like a good heart. You, you, you saw the path wasn't going anywhere. You wanted to get out. You're back in Winnipeg. Do you gravitate towards back to drywall at that point? Oh yeah. Yeah. Drywall. Uh, it was the one marketable trade skill that I came out of that was, okay, I can use this to earn a living. Yeah. So I went, I went and cold called a couple of drywall, uh, just construction sites in general driving around in my sister's car that she was graciously left alone me while I got my life organized. So you know, shout like out, sister. shout out to your sister. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. She's awesome. Um, so I called a couple of people. I stopped in on a couple of sites and the one guy's like, yeah, man, you can start like tomorrow. I'm like, Oh man, I need a couple of days. Like I'm, I don't have any stuff. I just got back to town. I'm just trying to okay. figure out what to do. And uh, so I went, got my stuff. My sister bought me a bunch of tools, basic cool. whatever you can get at Home Depot. Very cool. Picked up a couple of things. Um, got to work there for like about three weeks, and I just, I just wasn't mentally prepared. Okay. I just couldn't. Perf- yeah. Like mentally, I wasn't there, and I was starting to crumble a bit. So well, I and back all to- due respect, let me interrupt you a little bit. All due respect, like this is the premise of like, if you're listening and you want to like try to, you know, and you have an addiction issue, you might want to do something about it. This is where 12 step programs can be helpful because you have a network of people that can help, <clears throat> you know, like these sorts of things, you know, it's like a buffer or, or, a, you know, they have halfway houses, their support in other, in other words, out there where you kind of don't have to like do it on your own, you know, but you, you, you were going on your path. It didn't, you know. And those, and those, uh, and those avenues work really well for some people. Yeah. Um, They work really well for a certain amount of time for some people and certain people, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. And I wasn't like, I, I, I knew what to do. I just needed to do it. 
Because okay. again, I'd already been down the, the 12 step path in Calgary. So okay. I knew the steps, right. I knew what to do. I just had to work the steps, but in my own way. Sure. So I, uh, I, I did and, and it worked out really well. Okay. Okay, cool. So you're, you you're, that. you're with this company and you like, uh, you know, three weeks in and you're just like, I don't know if I'm ready. What happens? What happens next? Um, I just took a little bit of a break, like a week or two and sort okay. of gathered my thoughts and, and just kind of pulled it together a little bit. Okay. And then I went and reached out to a different company and they couldn't put me on a site fast enough. They were just like, yeah, man, go, you know what to do. Okay. Uh, how much do you want to get paid? And I'm like, tell you what, I'll come to work for you for $15 an hour. Okay. Knowing full well, I was worth better than that. Yeah. Because at that point, I'm a four-year taper. Okay. Um, finisher, taper, yeah. finisher, whatever. Um, I'll prove to you what I what I can do, and then you pay me what you think I'm worth. Beautiful. So knowing that I wasn't going to go in there with a bunch of attitude and ego and be like, oh, man, I'm worth X number of dollars an hour, and you're going to pay me or I'm going to leave. I was just like, no, I got to prove my worth. I so like I did. It. Yeah, and I worked with those guys for like three years, and uh, had a, I had a bunch of machine like uh, automatic tool experience because that's what I was trained with from the start. Okay, so Wait, with a, that with that company, you were getting automatic tool experience. No, with the the guys that I worked with. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I guess after you had prior Chris, prior experience because Chris okay. was an automatic tool guy, okay. and then a company I worked with in Calgary was automatic tool guys, big production stuff all the time. Okay. So you had that, and, you had that knowledge. Yeah. I had that firsthand experience with all those tools, like the full aims and okay. uh, Columbia stuff. All right. So I, um, I, I showed those guys what I can do and I showed up all the time and I was you know on time. I was ready to work. Yeah. Learn some things that I didn't know because we didn't do sanding in Calgary. It's a separate thing. But in Winnipeg, okay. you have to stand your own work. So I had no idea. Okay. But eventually, um, I started using the tools that they had rented. And then some of the older guys were like, oh, man, that works pretty good. Hey, let's get the young guy. Hey, hey man, you're going to work with me today because I was doing a lot of the trowel work with the boxes. Okay. Saving them a bunch of effort. And they're like, oh yeah, hey, you're working with us today. So you were running the tool you were running the automatic tools, but maybe the guys that you were working with didn't run the tools. They didn't run them at all. Okay. They're just old, so old, they're just old, old school. They that. they like the efficiency of the tools and they also like the clean the cleanness of the tools, correct? I think they just like to watch me sweat and work. And they sat around <laughs> drinking, drinking coffee, smoking cigarettes, and, and watched the you, new guy and bust his ass. Yeah, and you were producing like ten times as much as them. <laughs> and I made a couple of them look really good by helping get stuff done, and everybody's day got a little easier. Yeah. Did you ever have and the I guy got, saying like, "Hey, whoa, 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 rookie, slow down, man. We we got to milk this job out a little bit." <laughs> No, we never had that. They just kept telling me, oh, you can't do that. And I'm like, what do you mean I can't? So, yeah, I can. I just did it, man. Like, just look down the thing. It's done. They're like, oh, no, right. you can't do that. I'm like, dude, I do it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Can. I just did it. Cool. You're blowing these guys' minds. So you were using Ames and Columbia Tools at that point in time? Yeah, the uh, Winnipeg set was a bunch of Ames stuff. Uh, used Ames and tape tech and old Columbia stuff in Calgary. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, I'm, I'm primarily a machine taper, but I can use basically whatever you hand me. Yeah. It's just one of those things after all the years of playing in the mud, you just, you just, uh, try different tools and different things. Yeah. And if you're I'm open, if you're open, you do, there's still some salty old dinosaurs out there that don't, don't want to try the tools out. Uh, man, I'm all constantly buying new things to try, and there's a couple of really disappointing tools I've purchased in the last few years. And there's Ooh, really... should we talk? Should we talk about the disappointing tools? Uh, sure. <laughs> I'm not. I don't care. 
I was really disappointed. It wasn't it, it wasn't an inexpensive tool, so I'm a little disappointed in it for all sure. All right, all right. Let's talk about we don't have to talk brands. What what type of tool was it? Uh Tape Tech Mud Runner. It was a mud runner. And now okay, yeah. I get confused about the mud runner because I it was after my time. Cause I've been doing fresco. I don't, I didn't get to run the tools like, and they came out with like, you know, the mud pumps and stuff. Like I never used those. So the mud runner, right. explain it to me a little bit. Like well, it's you for, use a, for the layman. It's a, um, it's a pump filled angle finishing tool. That's got a, I don't know, a capacity. That's about twice that of an angle box. If you know, if okay. you're familiar with the angle. Yes, like the we ran, yeah. we ran, I was, I ran an angle box. Yeah. Okay. So the mud runner is a replacement for that. Okay. And it's clumsy. It doesn't fit in closets. It's not inexpensive. Okay. It sits in my storage. Uh, I'm just very disappointed in it. It doesn't work very well at all. They look pretty. It, they look awesome. I was really, really hoping it would be great. And I really <laughs> gave it, I gave it a couple of tries where I was okay. like, okay, uh, today I'm going to get this thing dialed in. Okay. Maybe tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Next, next job. I'm, uh, screw it. This thing's going to storage. What, what would that learning curve look like? Like you go to use it, you use it for an hour and you're just like, why am I doing this? I'm going to go back to the mud, the angle box. Screw this. Um, Oh, I, I, I slogged through a whole top floor of a house and just fought with it, fought with it and fought with it, trying to get the mud down. And, and, it, and just because I'm stubborn, yeah, I, I toughed it out and did the thing and, yeah. and, uh, I cleaned up a lot of really ugly angles. I, I okay. wiped out all the three ways and I was satisfied with some of the finish, but not overall the the operation of the tool. So okay. the finish wasn't the issue. It was how not user friendly the tool itself was. Okay. So and it wasn't for a lack of trying because there's obviously there's a need for the tool. The tool's out there. People use it. Why yeah. do you think certain people use the mud runner over the angle box? Um, it's not as hard on your back. Okay. And core, it's more of a, it's more the mechanics of the handle. You have to twist the handle and push all at the same time, okay. similar to the compound tube. Okay. But, but there's a, there's a flow very vari variable with like, you turn the handle and then you have to push. And if it's not floating down the wall, just right, it, it gets really out, it gets out of hand in a hurry. Okay. And, the angle box was never my favorite tool. Okay. I like I have a throttle box as well and it's not yeah. really my friend. Okay. It does a great job. <laughs> it, but okay. it's just harder on my body as I get yeah. older and older. Like I can run it and I can run it good. Yeah. But I'm, you know, I'm a little old for that kind of tool and that's where it's nice to have a nice <clears throat> young guy in his 20s early 30s to pull the tools. Okay. I've kind of paid my dues in that respect, I suppose, but you have, it still works really well. The angle, the, the angle box is just harder on my body. So okay. I was hoping this mud runner would be the answer to that. And it, 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 it wasn't. No. no. Okay. So that sits in, that sits in your, uh, I think you could probably sell it. There's also some Facebook pages where you could throw it up and be like, Hey, you know, whatever you paid for it, just throw up like, you know, 60, 70% of the cost and be like, Hey, I got this thing. It's clean. I've, it's only been used a couple of times. I'm sure you could sell it, you know? Yeah. If I, if I ever get around to it, I'm always working. So I don't really, yeah. you know, it sits in the corner of, in the, in the corner of shame right now. And it can yeah. just sit there till I, till I'm done. I don't really care. Sometimes too. You never know. Like maybe like, maybe that you're going to need, you know, you got two young guys and you need both the angle boxes rolling at once or something. You know, yeah, you never know. Like I, <laughs> I, I don't typically get rid of tools. Uh, when, once I buy, once I buy tools, I tend to just hang Smart. on because yeah, Smart. Again, sometimes you need a backup for a thing. Okay, we'll do one more tool that did not that you did not like. What's next in line? 
Um, well, sadly, I'm going to say the corner cobra from Columbia. Okay. What's wrong with the I, corner cobra? It just it just seems clumsy to me. Like the whole, it seems to flop around. And for the layman lot. again, what is the corner cobra? Let's explain it first in your in your words. It's an adjustable corner roller, specifically, if I'm not mistaken, for uh, flex speed, like no coat for okay. off angles. Okay, it's for rolling, rolling out, embedding uh, tape or uh, or uh, um, what is it, no coat into off angles. Yeah. Yeah, setting and, and rolling out. Okay. Embedding, as you said. Um, so you got the corner cobra. Um, it's got a cool name, but maybe maybe not the performance. So what's wrong with the corner cobra? I, I'm just pretty efficient at doing it without and getting a good result. So overall, it just didn't really speed me up at all. It didn't make anything okay. really any easier. So it it might be just. It might be the bee's knees for somebody, but for me, it just seemed to be a little extra effort for no greater uh, time saving or or pain, really. Maybe unnecessary. And then real quick, it was a cool cool name. (laughs) It was a cool thing. I tried it. It just doesn't work (laughs) for me. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to bad trash uh, Columbia. No, no, you, no, they're cool. Um, But uh, you, do you run Columbia tools now? I have a mixed bag of all sorts of things. Okay. Have, all right. I have Columbia You're... pumps and, and a paper and North star stuff and tape deck stuff. You're and... a whore. You're just, you're a tool whore. I like to use tools that work really well. So I'm not married to any brand. I love it. Love it. Well, uh, and you know, I, you know, what's beneficial to the companies. Somebody like you is that you give adequate feedback because you use different tools. You vetted a lot of different tools and your, that your feedback becomes extremely valuable to the, not only to the tool company, but to other uh, app- applicators. Sure. So my first position, my first set of boxes was a tape tech when I first started my company, my uh, the bo- the guy I was working for at the time in Calgary, he went out and bought me this. You know, I paid for it, but he went and picked it up for me because I didn't know where to get it. Sure. Because um, in those days, I was just hourly guy. I show up. I had no idea. I didn't have yeah. a credit card. I, I had like nothing. I don't know why, why my wife even decided to have me stick around is this mystery, but I, I dig it <laughs> sweet, so, uh, sweet cool. cheeks sweet cheeks hung in there <laughs> for the win man for the win <laughs> yeah so he set me up with some tape tech boxes and i ran those into the ground and then i bought some columbia boxes and uh i um now i'm running north star boxes and okay. north star bazooka north, north okay star north Taylor. star boxes versus columbia uh, I find them way smoother. What the North Star or the Columbia? Yeah, sorry, the North Star. I just okay. Um, my last, uh, I do have a Columbia 14 inch box. Yes, um, it works pretty good. I bought it specifically for skimming ceilings, um, so it's a purpose purchase. Uh, I found it leaked a little bit right off the bat. They sent okay. me an extra gasket for the for the back plunger door. Okay. Uh, it still leaks out of the corner. It doesn't okay. get used a lot. Okay. The North Star box is just like right up. It was just like, I don't know. There's just something about them that's just a lot smoother. Okay. Um, and I, I, I don't know if it's the gasket material or not, but the mechanics of the, of the tools are essentially the same. Okay. And so um, those are really nice. I, lo- I love those tools. Um, okay. I've got. And you have the bazooka. Table. You have the, the North star bazooka as well. Is that your go-to bazooka? That's my primary at this point. It's a North star elite and it's okay. awesome. Yeah. It's, it's, but like any other automatic taper, um, you, you don't take care of it. It gets gummed up or yep. fussy and then it creates issues and, and they're all the same in that sense. Sure. Um, my first automatic taper was a Columbia, the old blue and gray. It had slick on the little plate where the filler hose or filler nozzle is. That's an old, old tool, huh? 
It it was an old one. Well, I bought it in two thousand seven. Oh, so okay. I used that. So not an old old one, but it was the blue and gray before they went to the all black. Okay. Colors that they are now. Okay. I ran that one for a few years, and then one of my helpers dropped that one down the stair. Beautiful. So I went and bought another. I went and bought another one. Sent that one to Columbia. Uh, well, I actually, I talked to Aaron on the phone, and he said, "Yeah, just send it in." So I sent it in, got it rebuilt. Beautiful. And then, uh, and then uh, I used those two tapers for I don't know, almost ten years. Oh, okay, cool. And then I bought the North Star, and then started using that as my primary. So I still have one of my original Columbias as a backup. Yeah. And I gave the other one that got dropped down the stairs to my main helper, the guy who actually dropped it down the stairs. Nice. So little little so uh, homage. You pay paying homage to the damage the damage maker. Yeah. Here's that thing you broke. Glad you didn't get broken too. Uh, now, okay. So when you send that tool back, it drops down the stairwell. You send it back to Columbia. They're not like, hey, you dropped this down a stair stairwell, you idiot. Like, you know, do, do they charge you to repair it? How does that work? Oh, yeah. There was a cost for it, for sure. Okay. Was it like How crazy it or was it was it worth it? it? It was cheaper than a new one. And uh, sure. Okay. Really, at the end of the day, it's cost to do business. Things get broken. You fix it. And then yeah. you keep moving. Yep. You can't dwell on the nickels and dimes when it comes to maintaining or repairing tools. Because right. A quick cost analysis will tell you that, okay, if it's going to cost me $1,500 to fix this thing that's only $1,400, I'm just going to go buy a new one and yes. have a parts donor. Um, right. And and that's, I guess, kind of one of my, not really a, not so much a gift, but I can look at something and go, okay, well, what's this worth? Well, am I going to buy the parts, spend eight hours of my time learning how to take it apart, put it back together? and maybe not have it work properly or do i just send it into somebody carry on doing what i do i get back a factory rebuilt unit and i just keep trucking yeah so send it to them they do the thing i buy another one and i now i have a spare and i just keep moving and then i always have yeah. spare tools i've got extras of just about everything smart and then so, if the if the new one breaks, then you got a backup. It's uh, efficient business. Yeah. It's what it is. Well, it, there's the there aren't millions of dollars in my in my year. There's you know I'm in the hundreds and the thousands, not hundreds of thousands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So any downtime is really not great. Yeah. How and, many how many employees? Um, I had at one point. Uh, Five employees in Calgary. Okay. okay. And cur currently, we, uh, I just, have, I have a, we're amalgamated two companies here. We're kind of like an unofficial okay. partnership. Okay. Uh, and everything is just everybody's sub trades. Uh, they're free to work for whoever they like, whatever okay. they want. Okay. I'm the only employee of, of SSB Drywall. Okay. All right. And that works pretty efficient, I imagine. More efficient than, having employees yeah it has its they both have their benefits you know, yeah. an employee you can tell him hey man this is where i need you a sub trade you have to ask him hey man are you available for yeah so it changes like the the expectation yeah so when i had employees in calgary i uh i provided a vehicle for my main guy i um, i had uh, like a a health spending account, which is kind of like a benefits program. He never used it foolishly because he just wouldn't, but whatever, that's his thing. I would provide him with whatever tools and materials he needed. Hey man, the van's doing a thing. Okay, drop it off, get it fixed. Yeah. Have a backup backup truck, drive the backup truck for two or three days while the van's in getting repaired. Yeah. Business as usual. Everything just keeps on trucking, right? So um I, I just, I don't know. I spend a lot of money on tools and vehicles to keep all my stuff working and, and happening. Yeah. You spare no expense to keep that machine turning, which is smart. It, it's, it's got to, or, or I'm yeah. like not dead in the water or I'm, but I'm behind. Yeah. And that's, and that's no good. 
Yeah, but now it seems like you you're doing a lot of the hands-on work, maybe more so than you would like. Um, I've always been on the tools. Always. Okay. Okay. You enjoy running the tools? I don't hate what I do. Yeah. Yeah. I still this is like my well, uh twenty seventh year is almost wrapped. I'll be into my twenty eighth year in August. And I still don't hate what I do. You're almost a journeyman. <laughs> I'm on a journey, man. <laughs> Sure. Uh, um yeah you almost know everything uh so then so the, stuff. <laughs> but you're not so uh you're not so smart that you can't learn something new i guess uh so so well, you I, about, I just learned a new thing thanks to you and I, yeah you, looks awesome yeah you uh you hear about this fresco harmony thing and uh old nick's coming up to uh visit the uh columbia headquarters there's like this crazy training. You're like, I'm going to go down. You, you, did you like, you didn't hesitate. It seemed like you inquired, I think with me on face on Instagram messenger, you were like, Hey, is this legit? Should I actually come to this thing? I was like, yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah. I, I don't remember exactly the the specifics of all that, but um, if I'm not mistaken, it was a painter acquaintance out of Canmore that first put me onto your thing. So I was kind of watching on the sidelines just to see what happens. Cause he does all sorts of stuff with different plaster. Oh, okay. finish. And I think that's where I first heard of Fresco Harmony. So, and then, and you know, following you on Instagram was, was, uh, was a thing. And long before I, this training came up. So then because of where I am, there's uh, logistical issues with getting certain materials and tools up here. Okay. There's two suppliers in town and they're not drywall specific. They're just hardware stores. Okay. So All right. um, anytime I'm going to the city, I'm picking up thousands of dollars worth of materials and or tools or parts to repair tools, um, parts and supplies. Yeah. So to make a trip down to the city, to go do that, I also made sure that I took back a van full of corner bead that I like to put on, yeah, uh, box box blades and um, just things that you can't just go to the store and get here. Like I was familiar, yeah. used to Calgary. I had suppliers all around, and I can just. Get what where I did you go in uh, BC to get that stuff? I went to a uh, shoemaker. I went to a dry. Uh, a Dryco. I went okay. to a uh, Pacific West Systems. I picked up a tool from Aaron when I was at Columbia after he gave me after he gave me a tour of the facility. What do you What did you pick up from Aaron? Uh, I got a, uh, a three and a half inch mechanical angle head. Okay. Have you used it? Yeah, that's it's awesome. I have like now. It. I have a spare, right? Because I have a rebuild <laughs> kit. Yeah. Because I have a rebuild <laughs> kit for it that I'll rebuild my old one with. And then I have another one just sitting there waiting for when this new one needs to be rebuilt. Right. And what was your, what was your experience of getting to see that factory? I have my own opinion, but uh, where the Columbia tools are made, what was your, just give you, give your uh, summary of getting to see all that machinery. It's pretty spectacular. It's very impressive because uh, yeah. when I was in high school back in the what 90, something um i went to uh, a trade school for part of my high school credits for graduating okay. and i did a course that that implemented some of those machines at the very early days of that cnc technology okay so and then, then i worked in a machine shop after high school for like a year okay so i have an understanding of how a lot of those machines work oh, from actually using them in school yeah so it was cool to see just how like they make the fasteners. They make they make everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like, those little like bins. They do it those the, the little the bins of the little the little parts. Those that was yeah. impressive. Not just the, so much the manufacturing of all of these components, but like the organization that goes into, you know, putting one of the tools together is really impressive to me. You know, you can tell it's like this is years and years of evolution, you know. Yeah, they're they're definitely not winging it. Like they got it figured no. out. And uh, 
and just the, just the the amount of things that they produce in house was really surprising. I, I wasn't expecting that at all. I thought, okay, cool. They'll make a couple of bits and pieces and they'll assemble a bunch of stuff. Cause let's face it, a lot of places just outsource all the production of the tools and the, and the machining. And then they just assemble things. Not everybody, right. but a lot of things, right. And just not drywall. I mean, just kind of like a broad brush statement, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was very cool to see that they make practically everything in house. Yeah, a so lot. That was very impressive. So you came down, you came down, you brought your van, you you did this tour, picking up tools and stuff. Was the Fresco Harmony training your last stop or your first stop on that tour? Um, that was kind of in the middle because I was staying in a, an Airbnb nearby. Oh, okay. So I got. I got up super early. I think that thing started at like nine o'clock. Yeah. We, we were just like, come in, come in whenever. Yeah. We're going at nine, you know, hanging out. And I'm usually up at five in the morning. So as per right. usual, I got up, got up at five, got out the door, went to my, fir- I was at my first stop for like five thirty. drove all over the lower mainland, essentially looking for, things that one guy didn't have. So I had to go to another spot and then I had to go to another spot and then I went to another spot. So by the time I got all my running around done, my van was loaded. All my tools were in hand, except for the, the the angle head that I got from Aaron. And uh, thanks for that, Aaron. Um, (laughs) I, um, I had everything in there. So after the training was done, I just, um, all I had to do is make it in time to get to the ferry and make sure I got on my on my way home. Cool, cool. And you and I mean, uh, out of the gate, so you 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 were curious about Fresco Harmony, but you didn't really know the nuts and bolts of, you know, like the process of base coat, second coat, sealer, which you obviously do now. Um, is there any? I guess suggestions or advice that you would give somebody that's curious about get, you know, if they're curious about Fresco Harmony, is there any advice that you would give them if they're just, if they're curious about getting into it, I guess. Quit pissing around and just get dirty, man. It was, (laughs) it was, I wasn't intimidated. I was just intrigued. And then it was just because of where I live. It's not exactly something that I can just go and get. And I'm typically, I like to hands on something. I'm, I'm <clears throat> kind of getting over that old crusty drywall guy. If I can't touch it, I don't like it. Or is it something sure. new I'm not in? Yeah. So I'm embracing that whole, you know, just buy stuff and try it. Yeah. So going down and actually trying it with you first, I was like, all right, cool. This is neat. I can, I, I can dig this. Okay. And then you were uh, kind enough to give me a, a color pack and a, yeah tub of uh, top coat or sealer to go home with yeah and, and i just i had you know because i've been playing in the mud for so long i i had an understanding of what to expect from the application because you know i can right. use a trial i can use a pen and knife I, I i can do all these things right so then in my mind on my way home because there's lots of time to think about everything but what i'm doing um I figured, well, okay, so I had an idea of what I wanted the wall to look like, so I mixed up part of the color pack, and then I added it some, some more for the second coat. And it was just like, well, okay, well, that's that's really easy. So it's not easy, but in it, it, it exactly it came out exactly what I was expecting it to do. Okay. So it wasn't like don't be intimidated by it. If back to the whole uh, any advice for somebody, it's like man, just get yeah. some, give it a go because it's pretty cool and. I, I think the wall looks awesome. Yeah, it looks great. I mean, that doesn't occur to me because I've been doing it for like 20 years. But in the beginning, I guess I've, I've talked with Sean Brawley's dad about that aspect, that sort of intimidation factor. It was there for me in the beginning, especially like trying it on people's walls. I convince these like poor homeowners like, Hey man, you know, (laughs) let me do that wall. And it was like, you know, it was, it was a lot heavier and not, not, it wasn't the way I do it now. You know, I'm just smearing colored mud on the wall. You know, when I was starting out, it was pretty intimidating, but I don't, I don't consider that now 
that that's challenging for drywall finishers, especially drywall finishers that have been doing, you're using my white mud for a long time. You're used to making the wall flat. Now all of a sudden it's like, no, nah, no, nah, leave it, leave it messy on the first coat. And, you know, I, I think getting over that intimidation factor is kind of a thing, you know, for drywallers. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and the fact that, um, that I got to hang around and watch you put it on that wall in, in the Columbia, like the boardroom or whatever it was. So we got to back and forth, a lot of questions and answers. And yeah. uh, I think that was better than if it had been a, a big turnout with a bunch of people, it would have been a lot less personal or personal. Yeah. It just yeah. It would have been different. So I was able to just sit and watch and yeah. then, Again, because I know sort of what to expect of mud and how thick to mix it, and yeah, and, like it wasn't really as challenging as I thought. No, <laughs> uh, the whole the whole the, the biggest challenge for me was, and the reason why I went down was, well, I don't think there's going to be a a training anything closer than Vancouver for me geographically. Like that's that's it, right? So. You know, like I might as well take this opportunity to go and learn something new. Yeah. Because he's not coming to Pell River. So no, no. And <laughs> I mean, now we're going over to England next. I mean, I'll probably be back over at Toronto at CSR. Um, right. but you know, I mean, there's only so much I can do, you know. Yeah, we're, we're gotta keep know. working, man. And and that's where the videos come in come into play. You know, there's a lot of videos on the YouTube page and stuff, but like you're saying, man, if you're curious about doing it, get a color pack. I think CSR will, you know, if you request a, a sample pack, I think they'll send you out a sample pack, you know, and if they don't, you know, call me and I'll call them or whatever, if you're very interested, um, you know, or just buy some, it's not that expensive, you know, and you can try a wall or whatever. Um, very good feedback. I ordered, I ordered I ordered some more stuff from them the other day. And I, I think that when I was on the page ordering some things, it came up with a pre-order. I think it was in a custom color section. So I don't even remember exactly what I ordered, but there's something coming and I'm going to make some boards with it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I'll just buy some, buy some supplies and just mess around with it a little bit. Well, in the, in your area, it's almost easier just to order online. And that was the whole point with getting into CSR. It's like, oh, well, if I get into CSR, those guys can ship it anywhere. You know, it's just gravy. Five to seven days, it's at my house. Okay, that's great. That's and that, a great term. And that's amazing, right? Like, it's a yeah. full day for me to get to Vancouver, basically. Yeah, yeah. By the time you're done with getting out of the house, get on the ferry, two boats. It's the better part of the day just to go to the city. So CSR is awesome. Their mail order is really great. Yeah. That's, that's what I've heard. And my experience as well is that they're very on top of it. Very cool. Absolutely. Jeff Schultz out of Powell river. Uh, what's your pearl of wisdom? Well, have you listened to any of the podcasts just out of curiosity? Yeah, I was listening to some today. Uh, I listened to the guy from Vancouver that makes the bead, the the bead on a stick. You know that the what was the bead roller thing? Yeah, yeah. It's just like a really simple, basic name. But uh, I think it's the sponge thing, and then he had like yeah, the sponge on a pole, and then the he had a, he had a roller. Pole. Yeah, he had a roller with a butterfly sort of uh, thing. I was coming up with names, but it was like this yeah. special special roller, and there was special sponge, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna reach out to that guy, and I'm gonna order up one of those rollers because I've been really um, anti roller for a long time. Ah, yes. I, I just use my fingers, and I because I can feel the metal, and I can like I. I I, I totally nerd out with it and I could just feel it going on if it's going well, on. Well, right and you could tell that guy knows his shit about applying corner bead. That's all he does. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I, like, I, I like, I don't hate the job, but I think that might wind <laughs> me down a little bit faster than just having to mix it up sometimes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I'm going to uh, order up one of those uh, oh, cool. with them and uh, give that a go. I mean, he said they were like more expensive, but if it's, if it, you know, works as efficiently as who cares, you know, extra 70 bucks, 80 bucks, who cares if it's like a really cool tool, you know, and, and kudos to you too. Uh, you know, he's, 
he's firing it off. He's like trying to get a tool out there. It's, I think, you know, we all need to support each other. So that's super cool. You know, I'll send him a mud runner if he wants to trade. <laughs> there you go. I don't think he, I don't think he plays in the mud too much though. In that capacity. I think that guy is just all, all bead all day, man. <laughs> he might but, have better luck selling it in the big city than I will here. So, yeah. What's your uh, pearl of wisdom? Then I asked everybody a pearl of wisdom uh, to bestow upon the drywall community. Oh man. Um, check your work and don't forget to breathe. Ooh, good. Those, one. Are, those, those are the best ones. That one was given yeah. to me that don't forget to breathe. was given to me yes. when I was fighting angle box in my like second year. Yeah. Sitting in the corner yeah. and I was choking this angle box and my boss walks by and he's like, Hey man, I'm like what? You want some advice? Sure. Don't forget to breathe. And he just smirks and walks away. Yeah. And I'm like, that's it? Are you kidding? I was furious. And it turns out to be the best advice I've ever got. Oh like, yeah. Yeah, I, I know sometimes too, when I'd be working like large wall, you're on a job, I'm doing like miles of fresco harmony, my shoulders are tense, I'm all tensed up, I'm listening to music, and it's like Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, this is a meditation. Relax your shoulders, breathe, yeah. and 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 allow that flow. Try try not to tense up so much, I think is a huge component of, especially with the tools. All of this, all of the mechanics to drywall finishing are so fluid. And I think it translates mm-hmm. to how our our uh our relationship to the to the wall and to the the tool that we're using and to the mud like our, uh, our calmness, you know, and also it's better for you. Oh yeah. Breathing is good. Like breathing yeah. is really important for everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's so dude, cool. dude, thank you so much for coming on the drywall podcast. Not only do you get to have this awesome podcast, like release, uh, episode 59, I believe, which is pretty cool, but, uh, CSR, CSR is going to send out sweet swag bucket. So full of cool stuff. Might get another uh, uh, color pack. Don't order any Merriman well, beige. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're gonna okay, get a Merriman. Gotcha. You're gonna get a Merriman beige uh, color pack in the swag bucket. But uh, cool, man. Thanks for being on the Drywall Podcast today, Jeff. It was awesome. Right on. Th- uh, thanks for having me, Nick. And uh, keep on keeping on, man. Glad to hear you going to England. That's uh, that's pretty cool. Oh, I'm very excited. It's gonna be. Uh, there's a market for it over there. The dude's got like 20 guys, like ready for training i've sent him a couple boxes of product he's already like selling it and um i'm super stoked to go over there and to hang out with like the english dudes and like you know see how they do it and what just just like you man it's like just jumping into the fire you try something new it's like you know people are interested in england let's go sell it in england who cares right you know yeah of course what's there to lose well, i'll keep it <laughs> I'll, I'll keep you posted on when I can swing uh, swing some time to come down there, and if it works that you have some job to do, then uh, I just be all over a, jumping in. I just looked at a monster today, so yeah. Uh, if you're inclined or anyone is inclined to coming down, jumping on with Jack, doing a job, getting on the job training, it's so cool. We've had a couple people come down, work with me do a fireplace, do some walls. And I mean, that experience is like through the roof because you're like in people's homes. It's like real, you know, we're not just dilly dallying in the studio making samples. We're like, you know, I throw you to the wolves on the job. If you screw it up, I'll fix it. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, make it's it look good. good. Man. I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> awesome. It'd be cool. It'd be cool to have you down here. Cool, man. All right, brother, you have a good evening and uh, I'm sure that we'll be talking soon. Don't be a stranger. All right, Nick, be well, man. All right, bye. Special thanks to Jeff Schultz for being with us on the Drywall Podcast today and sharing his knowledge. We appreciate it a bunch. The Drywall Podcast can be listened to in its entirety on your favorite platforms such as Podbean, Apple Podcast, Spotify, and also YouTube. Tune in every Friday as we have new guests joining us with special drywall skills and adventures that they possess. 
The Drywall Podcast was brought to you in the month of July by our friends over the pond at GWI, supplying the UK with drywall products, finishing products since 2021, delivering quality brands nationwide. You can check them out on Facebook, Instagram, or online at www.gwiltd.com. Thank you so much for joining me on the Drywall Podcast today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And remember, keep drywalling.